good morning everybody and let us continue our uh, lecture related to the component of the machine tool. In the last class we have seen the some of the different configuration of the rib so that you can reduce the weight of the machine tool structure and we have also seen that we can use some of the lightweight materials such as aluminum alloy for making some of the components so that we can reduce the weight without sacrificing the strength of the material. So, this type of options are very very important to understand that how we can make the system economically without sacrificing or without actually deviating from the required goal. So, let us continue this sub uh, topic further. So, this thing what we have discussed in the last class lightweight material and criteria for material selection that once we know that what is the final design. And then we have to finalize that some of the properties by which we can get the different materials out of it. Suppose first thing is the precision application. Suppose your requirement is of precision equip, uh, application, then what we have to see that we have to see the thermal and long term stability of the structure, that is very very essential. So you have to find some materials which are uh, not very very we have a let, less thermal coefficient expansion, and also you have to find something which is rigid so that long term stability is important because it will not deform by itself or because of the machining forces and later case after few years you may uh, get trouble out of uh, trouble from the machines. Lightweight construction is uh, desired for moving component that we have seen that if it is not lightweight then the excess movement from here to here it will take some time because you have to gain that in uh, you have to overcome the inertia forces so that you can get the required uh, particular motion for moving from one location to the other location. So, the lightweight construction is important, but again you have to see that it should be stable and it should be very very strong because some of times lightweight structure are not that much stable and you may end up with the uh, wrong design calculation. Then the high damping and stability should be provided to the by the base machine, machine base. So, now what is important because we know that our base is very very important. Now, consider this is the base. Now, what is problem if your base has no high damping or stability. Now, we know that we are putting the guideway here on the top. On the guideway what we have x y table. On the top we have a workpiece fixture and on the top we have workpiece correct. This is the uh, static loading whatever we are talking about and then on the other side now consider this is the structure then on the top side this is the spindle housing. then this is the collet and then this is the tool correct. So, now when you do actual machine that the time vibration will be propagated in the different different directions right. So, vibration may go in this direction vibration will go in this direction also. So, that is related to the damping capacity. So, if because now workpiece workpiece fixture these are the external part because this will be frequently changed depending on the selection of the workpiece. X y table guideway these are the fixed these are the machine components. So, when you decide some material for the X y table and the guideway material then you have to think about the damping property because whatever forces occurs here at this location at the time it will propagate from workpiece to the workpiece fixture and then it will go to the X y table. So, if your X y table has a high damping capacity then it will not propagate the uh, vibration further in the this direction. So, it will not go in downward it will absorb everything within that material only. So, you have to think about that also another thing about the stability because now we know that this whole thing are weight. So, it has some weight weight of this component. Right. So, when 
everything is loaded on the base at the time base will deform itself also even in static mode forget about the machining when you do machining at that time it will come across the static load there was a dynamic load also so it should have a high damping and stability in the base material so your whole structure should not deform at that time because base is the thing which is taking most of the load out of this particular machine tool and if that is deform or it has some type of uh, dimensional problem at that time that dimensional problem or the defects that will be actually replicated or reflected into the um, component which you are machining. So, you may not get the required dimension and you are end up with that geometric error that we have seen in the different different axis in one or two lectures before. So, light and light stiff design how you can uh, define the correctly placed material in the right shape while using as little material as possible. So, now what is the criteria for uh, getting this particular design that first thing is that material should be less, less material then right shape first you find out the which how much material you want to take it should be less material then you have to shape it then you have to find out the what is the right shape for making that we have seen in the different different type of rib construction correct so we have to find out the how much less material you can use and what is the shape which is giving more stability and that is now where we have to place this thing. So, then it is a placement correct. So, now we have to see the what is the loading direction. So, that is placement based on loading or force direction right. So, you have to see that which direction you are loading. So, if your uh, joint or whatever uh, particular material is in the same direction, then you have to see that what is the strength of that material. So, at that time you have to get the light stiff design based on this particular criteria. So, now what is the good design? Now, good design leads to a uniform distributed loading. Now, we know that we have a loading at a one concentrated point. Now, when you do machining operation and this is your workpiece and when you are drilling at that time what I mean thrust force is occurring here and because of this thrust port it will go to the collet and then collet to the spindle housing correct. So, now when it is going from one component to another component your distribution loading should be uniform that means it should not that one component stressed more and another component is less stressed because if you are end up with the non uniform loading then on one material is deformed very very uh, more and another material will not deform at all. So, because of that uneven deformation you may get some uh, permanent deformation in the workpiece geometries. Right? So, ideally the stress level under load should be same for all the material used. Now, we have seen that we can use different different materials and we have also seen that one particular material is not useful for making the whole system or the whole machine. So, we are using different material at different different uh, location for making different components and because of that all materials have different properties and that different properties are creating a different stress level and we have to make sure that the whatever stresses are generated it should be same for all material that we have seen in the last class as that if one is the making of this is the cast iron then if you are using a aluminum then actually you can increase the size of this component. So, if this is aluminum alloy you can increase the volume then actually you can maintain the stress level under the same loading. So, whatever loading is here if you are making this cast iron size and the aluminum size same then aluminum will be more stressed compared to cast iron. But if you keep the area little bit high in such a way that your total load or the total weight is not increased but these are, these are equal then actually you can maintain the stress level in the different different components. 
right. So, now construction material for the machine tools. Now, this is one of the uh, base of the machines. Now, what are the materials are mostly used? Cast iron and granite are most widely used material for machine base and slide way because of their some of the properties. It is one is the good wear resistance because if you see all the conventional lathe machine and the milling machine, your base you will find the cast iron. Granite is next to cast iron which is also widely used. Low thermal expansion because even if there is a temperature difference in the climate because mostly when you install a conventional lathe machine or milling machine generally you do not provide the envelope on the top. So, because of that what happens that whenever you are operating in a summer or you are operating in a winter temperature difference is more than 30, 40 degrees in some of the locations. So, because of that you may not get uh, large variation in the thermal deformation because of the climate temperature difference. Low stress cause deformation because when you are using this material, this material are subjected to less deformation when under uh, uh, stress and the high vibration damping capacity. So, whenever there is a vibration, this vibration will be propagated or it will be absorbed within this end only. It will not actually transfer to the other component or other joint. So, these are the some of the uh, advantages of this particular materials so that you can use it comfortably for the different different applications. But some of the issues are there when you are going to use this material for the uh, micro machining center because right now these are widely used for conventional machining where we are not looking at the detail at micron level or tens of micron level. But when our component and the machining parameters setting it considered as a micron accuracy or sub micron accuracy this material selection will play important role in the construction. So, let us see those things. So, this is the granite. So, the granite bed is very very useful compared to the cast iron because it is a crystalline hard stone consists of quartz, mica and the feldspar. So, combination of this thing is considered called as a granite structure. What are the important properties? This has high damping that means whatever vibrations are there it will absorb itself, it will not propagate or transfer to the under material. Low thermal conductivity it is 3.2 um, watt per meter Kelvin. Low thermal expansion, so it will expand 5 to 6 micron per meter in a per degree of Kelvin change. So, if you consider any component, suppose this is one component and this is 1 meter of length, 1 meter length and there is a uh, temperature is change. So, delta k is 1 k. Okay. So, whatever is this 1 k, whatever change you will get, you will change will get in, in terms of volumetric change, you will get 5 to 6 micron. Correct. So, this is uh, reasonably good for certain components, but when you are talking about a micro machining where sometimes your desktop cut itself is in the 5 to 6 micron at that time it may create some problem at the later stage. High hardness is one of the parameters by which you can select this thing for a uh, micro machine or some uh, reasonably good uh, macro machine part. Abrasion resistance is there and absence of residual stresses because if you make a component from the uh, cast iron or some other steel material at that time you have to actually machine those components. correct? And if when you do machining at that time there is a cutting forces include if you go by a casting process or powder metallurgy there are residual stresses you have to relieve before you use for end operation. But here you will not get a residual stresses that is one of the advantages so that you do not need to post process the uh, whatever structure you have fabricated out of the granite. But you same thing you have to do for the cast and because after once the processing of this particular structure is over, you have to pass through the uh, stress relieving operation so that it should not create any problem at the later stage. But if you see the granite, granite is also used for uh, combining with the steel material or some other materials. So, now if that is the case then what you have to do that you have to check the thermal properties to avoid bending and stresses at the interface. Now, consider now steel has a uh, coefficient of thermal expansion 11 to 13, but it uh, this particular thing is a 5 to 6 only. Now, see how this thing will make difference. Now, consider let us take one example that you have a two strip, this is the two strip and this one is a alpha 1 and this one is a alpha 2. 
Okay. So, alpha is the coefficient of of thermal expansion. Okay. And consider alpha 1 is higher than alpha 2. Now, you heat this component. Okay. So, this is the interface now you are heating. Okay. Now, we know that alpha 1 is has high coefficient of thermal expansion. So, this will expand or it will respond very quickly to the temperature change. But now, what is our objective? We want to keep this thing straight. But now, if this is the temperature, then what is happened that finally, you are end up with the bending of this thing, correct? Because this will start expanding, but this will not respond quickly because it has a low thermal expansion. So, it will remain within that particular uh, range only where it is expand, where, where it is uh, expanding, but if this will respond to more to the temperature. So, this will bend because now it is more expanded. So, now what is happening here in this particular case? Now, if you have two material, one is the stainless steel and another one is the granite and you have interface. Okay, so, this is the granite and this is a steel. Now, again you are this both the components are subjected to the heat. Now, what is going to happen? Your steel will expand more compared to the granite. Right? So, when you are utilizing or using the combination of this thing that means, you are keeping both the things together uh, granite and the steel at that time you have to make sure the temperature is not very, very fluctuating within that particular system. Even there is a 1 degree or less than 1 degree change that is enough to create some problem at the interface or it will create a bending that is because of this particular thing. Now, if you see if it is bending more then what you have interface will be different. Now, this interface may create some problem because now it will slip along this interface because one material is deforming or sliding over the other phase because of the temperature different. So, bending is one of the case and the stresses will be there in the interface and finally, joint will be loose and that is what you want to avoid for the long period of time. So, that is what is in terms of granite. So, what is the drawback, uh, drawback of the granite? It absorbs moisture because when you are using this in some type of humid environment where the temperature you are maintaining temperature, but humidity is very, very high then it is creating problem. So, where it is creating because when it is humid, humid at that time the it will become very sticky. So, when you are using granite as a micro machining uh, machine tool construction material at that time it, the moisture will create important, but there is one of the uh, remedies that either you use into dry environment you maintain the humidity below a permissible limit. So, that still you can use the granite or other thing what you can do you provide a sealing of the granite with the epoxy resin. So, once you make this component then what you do that you provide the epoxy resin. So, whatever moisture is there moisture will not come into contact with the granite and you can actually uh, keep this uh, particular structure safe against the high moisture. Then under motor is polymer concrete. So, this is the complete structure one of the structures by which you can make the uh, monolithic uh, structure. So, now what things are there that suppose here what you can see that here one guide way is given here that is the inbuilt here. So, you may get one uh, x axis in this direction. Now, these are the two guide ways are given here in this. So, you will mount one other guide way for moving in the y axis here and on the top of that or here also you are providing two uh, location where bolts are there. So, may be the z axis is coming from this particular location. So, you can see that many things you have to provide it you have to provide in this particular structure. So, that at the end you do not need to drill also. So, many times when you are casting this such a big things at the time you provide uh, some of the things very uh, comfortably. So, you do not need to do any type of extra machining for making those particular things. So, let us see what is the polymer concrete, right. So, polymer concrete consists of one is the filler material. So, what are the filler material? The sand, marble, quartz, pearlite, glass, fiber, uh, dolomite, steel or the carbon fiber. So, these are the filler material. So, you have to mix this filler material for the resin. 
So, if you mix two things, what are the resins? Unsaturated polyester, polymethyl, methacrylate, or epoxy. So, you mix two of these things in the presence of catalyst or the accelerant. So, what is the role of this catalyst accelerant? So, they will keep the property of this particular materials uh, intact. So, you this thing will not change when you are actually processing those things and it will also avoid the uh, effect of the external uh, uh, parameters temperature or maybe the humidity or other things it will not create any problem. So, you have to add some type of catalyst or accelerant which will actually increase the uh, probability of proper mixing of those two things and it will also reduce the total time and all things you have to do at the room temperature. So, once you make uh, two things you fix mix it along with the catalyst then there is a polymerization happens between this all the three things and then it becomes very very tough. So, this is the way you can make the polymer concrete. So, polymer concrete is the most suitable uh, machine frame material for the micro milling process. So, why it is so? Let us see this. So, it is up to 10 times higher absorption of the vibration than the cast iron. So, this is one of the examples of the corn machine. So, that machine we will see the demonstration uh, uh, sometime later. So, this is the vibration amplitude in the cast iron. So, this is the cast iron and this is the vibration amplitude and time is in terms of the uh, 0.1 second. So, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and this is the vibration level in plus 2 minus 3 micron. Now, if you see that when there is a vibration of this particular magnitude, it is a 6 magnitude, 6 micron magnitude plus or minus 3, then what is happening here that it is actually not diminishing to the 0 even after 1 full second. Now, if you consider this is 9 and this is the 1 second. After 1 second still it is there and if you actually extrapolate this particular graph, it may continue for under 1 second. So, after 2 second or 3 second, you may get a vibration diminish. But if you see the polymer concrete, now initially with the same loading you are first thing is you are not getting enough vibration here. right? So, it will absorb and within plus or minus 1 micron what is going to happen there within 0.4 or 0.5 micron your vibration is almost 0 in this case. And sometimes whatever this particular vibration also may not create any problem because it is within that particular uh, acceptable limit of the machine tool and that is the advantage of using polymer concrete for a structural material in place of cast iron or the granite material because both have some disadvantages and polymer concrete is actually overcome all the disadvantages of the cast iron and the granite material. Substantially better thermal stability than the cast iron, superior dynamic and static rigidity and the light weight because now you are using a polymer and concrete is a polymer is actually the one of the components which is very very light in weight and here cast iron uh, you and granite, granite you are using mostly it is a stone based um, uh, thing and you are not mixing anything there. So, its weight is also very high, cast iron is actually the metallic component. So, obviously its weight is very very high, but here concrete is one of the components which weight may be high, but you are using polymer also. So, depending on the proportion of the polymer and the uh, cast uh, concrete at that time that depends on the what is the total weight of the polymer concrete correct. So, that is the light weight superior dynamic and static rigidity that is also important. So, now this is the one of the graphs it is showing. So, this is the cast iron and now whatever we are putting that per Newton there is a uh, problem there is a deviation with the 0 0.5 0 0.3 micron. So, if you provide 1 Newton load then you will get a deformation of 0 0.3 micron. So, that is a bending moment or maybe the thrust force or whatever is way you are putting it. So, if you are providing this, so this is the scale of that, this much is the scale of a this part. So, when you are putting a load in this direction or impact in this direction, what is happening that this particular thing will is not very, very rigid in structure. So, now if you see this much is the vibration or this much is the uh, deformation in the, that deformation it is you know, double the amplitude. So, it is double than this thing. So, that is why it is showing the 0 0.6 micron in both the cases in these two these cases. So, that is not the correct way, but if you provide the same uh, loading or impact in this uh, polymer concrete, now you can see that it is not even half of this thing. So, 0 0.15 micron or something is there 
and that is the advantage of using uh, polymer concrete for the machine tool structure. Now, these are some one of the some of the advantages other than that uh, what you can get you can get the long term stability and this long term stability is very important because when you are using it micro scale machining at that time what you are end up then after 6 months or after 1 year the machine is not behaving as it should behave after some usage. So, if you are using a uh, polymer concrete material even though it is very costly it is costly but the cost is actually compensated by the precision and the whatever the rigidity you are getting and thermal stability what you are getting compared to the other parts. So, that is one of the advantages why you are using costly material, but still it is compensated co cost is compensated with respect to the different different parameters and the long term stability of the machine tool. Now, coming to the guide ways. So, now what are the guide ways? So, guide ways that means on which you are putting all the components. So, if you are using a spindle then the on the spindle you are putting this guide way because you have to move z axis in this direction. So, this will be the z axis when you are mounting vertical and if it is in x y table then it will be you need two in this case. So, one is moving in x direction one is moving in y direction and there then you are guiding that movement particular in different different directions. So, these are the two things. So, this is the linear guide way and these are the box type guide ways. So, here everything depends on that how far you, how much you are moving in this direction. So, accuracy of micro machine components depend on the precision of the guide ways. So, now if you see this thing this is mostly you will find in the large capacity machines and that is not the case in the micro machine. The axis of guide ways should have high acceleration as well as stiff bearing to compensate the forces. Because now say if you are using this thing for uh, x and y direction then what will happen your z axis will come here your tool will be here and you have a work piece and everything located at this location. So, when you are moving in x direction or y direction you have to actually encounter first is the acceleration how quickly you are moving your work piece in these two direction under the effect of forces. That means, when you do machining with high depth of current you will end up with the more machining forces or you are going with a high feed rate then again you can get the more forces in the machining process. So, it should have high acceleration because you quickly want to complete the particular processing step, but it should have high stiff bearing or the overall stiffness. Let us not consider only bearing only overall stiffness is more important. So, that it can compensate the forces which are acting during the machining operation. So, in the next lecture what we will see that we will continue this uh, guide way that what are the different guide ways and which guide way we can use for the micro machining center that we will cover in the next class. Thank you very much.